So, and I know, I know a lot of you have read or are reading the book, so I want to point out some of the things that may have changed a little bit as well. Step one, incline the patient. It's something, you know, again, I've seen people teaching manipulation and you know, I don't know where they learned it from, but it, you know, it's, it's the, the manipulation is, is like the Vatican. Things come down in the line, you know, so well, it's like if you, if you haven't been taught by Pete, you know, it's, but it's a, it's a different thing. So, but we're going to get the patient back. Then we're going to stabilize the head. So stabilizing the head was a little bit different. So if you read the book and you see that stabilizing the head was a little bit different in those days. The chairs used to be a lot less rigid uh, and the patient would move around a lot more. It was also um, different, different relationships and things as well. And so Pete would very much get them tucked in here like this. Now that can be a little awkward, uh, particularly for some ladies. Right? Or, uh, you know, or very nice for some gentlemen or whatever, you know. But we're not asking you to do it. We're just going to make sure that their head is stable. So usually I'm working slightly to the side. And the reason why I've grown this big belly is so that I can get them sort of belly up. Okay, so they're rested in here. Okay, we just don't want their head wobbling around. Okay, so it's not about getting them in a headlock. It's just making sure that their head is nice and stable. Fingers on the bone. Number of yesterday, you saw what I was doing, trying to make sure my fingers were on the bone. Pinky little finger goes behind the angle of the mandible. If we don't get the little finger behind the angle, okay, you can't torque the mandible. Okay, so if they're just here, you're just pulling down. Okay, so we need the little finger behind the angle of the mandible so that as we're turning that knob, the mandible is going into that most superior midmost position, okay? So, so just think about the mandible, think about that vector of force going up through that master muscle. It's just really where the best, the, the, the master muscle, the medial territory would take, would take the contact. <coughs> So your fingers load the condyles in the same direction as the muscles. Okay, keep the fingers close together. Oh, don't try and do this. Now, because I've got big fat sausage fingers, I'm, I, I, I'm very aware of keeping my fingers together. Make sure that they stay on the back half of the mandible. And then we sort of create this, this C and reverse C. Okay, so a few of you, we picked up on the thumbs were very flat. If you get the thumbs too flat, you tend to press too hard down. Okay, so you see the way we get that little break in the thumb, and again that gives us that turning force. Okay, so it's a C and reverse C. So when you it was a, a couple of groups yesterday, it was very good in that you were helping each other. It's always a good thing, and it's easier to see that if you're the assistant here. So thumbs hold the teeth apart, resist the pressure from the fingers. Then we let the jaw hinge, use no pressure, don't jiggle, okay? So you see the way those fingers are up, acting like they're lifting a table? So once we think the patient is hinging freely, we think we're in central collation. So we haven't, do you see the way we haven't done anything? Manipulation does not put someone in centric. Keeping the teeth apart and letting them hinge Puts them, they put themselves into centric. Once we think they're in centric, we're going to do the low test to see if we're there or not. That's the purpose of the low test is to see if we're in centric relation. So we're going to have the patient, once we think they're hinging nice and freely, <coughs> we're going to have them stop. Okay? And then we're going to apply one, two, three levels of load. Okay? So we've got to verify it, and that's what load testing is for. And we're going to ask them that question. Do you feel any sign of tension or tenderness in either joint region? So if we do get that, we've got to think, right, what's going on? What have I got to do? Because this is, I can't accept this as centric relation. 
So in centriculation, all the forces are going through the avascular, non-innervated disc structures. So three causes of tension or tenderness when the joints are loaded. The condyles aren't completely seated. Okay, that could be one. So if we can't load the joints, we've got to think, is it a clues? Is it a clues on muscle problem? Is it because um, the teeth, <coughs> in order to get the teeth together, we have to displace the joint and use the muscles? So how can we test that? We could use, just keep the teeth apart, we could use uh, Lucigig, we could use an aqualizer, we could use cotton rolls, whatever it is, just to keep the teeth apart. It could be that the disc is misaligned, it could be that we've got a lateral pole or a medial pole disc displacement. And now when we load test that it feels tender in there. So is it intracastular? Is it a lateral pole issue? Is it a medial pole issue? Is it a joint that's breaking down? Okay, so we can listen, we can take a history, do our examination, and if we need to, we can take, use these CPCTs or maybe MRIs to see what's going on. So we're trying to work out, is there something going on inside that capsule? But don't, you know, I, I, I did this. I, I can remember, I can remember the day I did it one day. 